So dear students, uh, welcome you all to our formal session. I'm going to talk about introduction to working capital management. And uh, you know that we are recording this. So if you have any queries, uh, you can ask, but uh, after a certain uh, period of time, once I cover my discussion, then you can ask me questions. And I have already mentioned informally that working capital management is how much important. I have used the example of our industries, factories. Uh, every year we observe that uh, use capital related organizations are facing problems, especially our ready-made garments. Uh, we have some observations from newspaper news and television news that uh, crowds of organizations, factories, they have land, building, machineries, but they were unable to pay wages and salaries to their employees. And these kind of problem is highly related to working capital management. They don't have very good financial analysts or finance officers uh, who are working on working capital management. So that's why uh, once the problem arises, only then they realize that they have working capital problem. But if you have really studied on working capital management, that will help you to identify your problems earlier, even six months, one month, or six months, one year earlier, and then organization can take necessary measures to solve working capital problem. And with this discussion, uh, I am Dr. Tanvir Muhammad Haider Arif he is going to explain uh, all this related to working capital management. Uh, under this chapter, uh, we have objectives. Uh, after completing this chapter, students will be able to grasp the concepts of working capital and its relation with management policies. You'll be able to understand the concept of working capital management policies and also be able to identify the goals of working capital management policies along with significance of working capital management policies. So what is uh, working capital or uh, what is the concept of working capital? So there are two broad concepts of working capital. Yes, simply we know that working capital is related to day-to-day -to -day expenditures of an organization, day-to-day -day operations of an organization. It's uh, related to short-term financing and short-term expenditures of an organization, or we can mention it's related to one year or less than one year uh, our transactions. But there are two major concepts of working capital. One is known as gross working capital, and another one is known as net working capital. So gross working capital and net working capital. Many cases we use net working capital, but remember both are important. What is gross working capital? Gross working capital is related to firms investment in current assets. So that is gross working capital. What investment you have in your current assets? And you know that what are the components and elements of current assets? We know current assets are those assets what we can easily convert it to cash within a shortest possible time or shorter period of time. That is, if we need cash, additional cash, we can convert these assets to cash within shorter or shortest possible time. And what it includes, cash, short-term securities, debtors, what is also known as account receivable or book debts, bills receivables and inventories. These all are the components of current assets. So when we talk about gross working capital, so gross working capital means firms investment in current assets. But same time, we need to use net working capital. And basically a lot of cases we use networking capital as working capital. So what is networking capital? Networking capital is the difference between current assets and current liabilities. Uh, we already defined current assets. So what are current liabilities? So current liabilities are those liabilities that a firm must pay within shorter period of time, or a firm has to pay in one year or less than one year time. What are the components of current liabilities? The account payable, bills payable, bank overdrafts, bank loans, and outstanding expenses. 
So the difference between current assets and current liabilities is known as net working capital. And now the question is whether both are important to understand or only one is important. No, both are important. We must know how much money we are going to invest in current assets because that is again related with our capabilities relevant to the liquidity. Liquidity is also important, why? Because we need to pay current liability. So if we have enough investment on current assets, that means we are capable enough to pay current liabilities. And the difference between current asset and current liabilities represent the net liquidity position of an organization. So this networking capital can be either positive or negative. Uh, yes, if your current assets, uh, uh, the position of current assets, uh, if exceeds current liabilities, we can say you have a positive networking capital. And if your current liabilities exceed current assets, then you can say it's a negative networking capital. Uh, which one is better? Positive networking capital or negative networking capital? Which one do you think better? So I think positive. 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 Obviously, positive is better. But there is a debate that how much? Is it huge? You know that uh, from other courses of finance, uh, you know, there's a debate of profitability and liquidity the trade-off between profitability and liquidity. So how much liquidity is really good? If you have enough liquidity, what is really idle, do you think it's good? Yes. Idle, idle amount of liquid assets, it's really good? No, no it's, sir. Not, it's not good because you are not getting return. So excess positive, balance is not good. Excess positive net working capital is not good. Yes, negative is not good. Positive is good. But remember, that should not be too much. Too much positive net working capital. And if you keep all this capital idle, not generating any cash flow, so positive net working capital uh, uh, will also not be good. Some key points that we have to remember. Uh, what are the key points? That both gross and net concepts of working capital are equally important for the finance manager, for the management of finance, for the management of working capital. Those are doing major in finance and also minor in finance. You must keep in your mind, if you have a job relevant to the finance, uh, there are use positions related to finance and accounts, people and others. So that case is you have to remember that both gross and net concepts of working capital are equally important. Then there is no precise way to determine the exact amount of gross or net working capital for any firm. That what is really optimum net working capital? What is really optimum gross working capital? No, you can't identify or you don't have enough tools and techniques to determine exactly what is the optimum level of cross working capital or optimum level of net working capital. So remember that, okay, because this is a decision science. Uh, we can take decision, we can calculate uh, net working capital, we can determine the need of working capital, but what is the optimum? You can say that the amount of $2 million is optimum, the amount of $3 million is optimum, you can't say, like this. Third key point, the data and problems of each firm should be analyzed to determine the same. So based on one firm, you cannot determine the working capital requirement of another firm. So you have experience of working with one government and then you have experience to determine a working capital, net working capital. You can't apply your experiences of determining working capital and the amount you have determined, that is again applicable to another government. No, you have to analyze the relevant data and information problems 
of different organizations separately to determine gross working capital need and net working capital need. And we know the working capital requirement is important to bear day to day expenditures to run day to day business activities. But remember, the need for working capital to run the day to day business activ activities cannot be overemphasized. There are so many other factors related to your business. So if you're just keen about only working capital, that will not help you a lot. You need to think about working capital. You must analyze the need of working capital. You have to determine working capital requirements to ensure liquidity. But if you just emphasize, overemphasize on working capital, you will find you will have some other problems. So you have to make a balance of understanding all the tools and techniques of financial management, all the tools and techniques of managerial finance. And then another key point, hardly find a business firm which does not require any amount of working capital. So it means that we need working capital. You will find hardly a business firm where working capital requirements is very minimum. And firms differ in the requirements of the working capital. Now, a relationship, relationship, a cycle. You, you know that what is the goal of a firm? especially the finance people, our goal is not profit maximization. Our goal is to maximize shareholders wealth. There is a clear difference between profit maximization and shareholders wealth maximization. Profit may enhance because of expansion, uh, because of further investment, but same time, we need to calculate whether earning per share increases or decreases. So the finance people, they are keen about earning per share. They're keen about maximizing shareholders' wealth. So since we are keen about maximizing shareholders' wealth, so we need to draw a relationship of the uh, a business cycle. What it is, we must ensure sufficient return from our operations. Okay, the first key point. And if we really want to ensure sufficient return. So we need to go for sales and that is successful sales activity. Now think about when we want to ensure successful sales activity to ensure sufficient return. Again, it's related to what? A steady amount of profit requires successful sales activity. So sales activity is related to good investment. So you have to invest enough funds in current assets for generating sales. Now you see that how working capital is associated with the all operations. The first we want return, yes, because we want to maximize shareholders well. So how can we ensure good return? So we need to go for successful sales. How successful sales can be assured? Again, you need to invest in current assets. You need to buy raw materials. You need cash. You need to invest for account receivables. You need to invest for inventory. So you see that you need inventory management, cash management, liquidity management, account receivable management. Once you can do all these, that will ensure successful sales activity. Then we can say you need working capital here. You need working capital management here. You need very good cash management, inventory management, account receivable management, and these all are the part of working capital management. Now then, what is working capital management? Working capital management refers mainly to the planning and control of working capital. We have already defined what is working capital. We know what is gross working capital. We know what is net working capital. We know what are the components of gross working capital and net working capital. We know what are the components of current assets and current liabilities. Then we know that our investment in current asset is gross working capital. The difference between current assets and current liabilities is known as net working capital. Now, what is working capital management? Since we know what is working capital, now the question is that we need to manage working capital. We must know how to manage scientifically working capital. We need to know the art and science of managing working capital so that no problem arise in future. 
And what are the two words that we need to remember? Planning and control. So working capital management refers mainly to the planning and control of working capital. Now you can explain what is planning and what is control. And in our sense, in our course, the planning working capital mean determination of working capital needs. Determination of working capital needs. How much working capital we need. How much working capital we need to maximize our return and minimize cost. So make a trade up between profitability and liquidity. We need to determine. We have some tools and techniques that we will learn in future from these course to determine working capital. That is our planning. Then once you determine, now is the time to ensure the proper utilization of working capital. So control is related to proper utilization of working capital. I'm repeating again, planning is related to determination of working capital needs and control is related to proper utilization of working capital. Sometimes we have working capital, but we can't utilize. Sometimes we are very good in utilization of working capital, but we don't know exactly how much working capital we need and how can we determine that requirements? If you combine both planning and control of working capital, that is known as working capital management. Working capital management is associated with working capital policy. Each and every organization must have their own working capital policy. You must remember that a good working capital policy of one organization may not be good enough for another organization. So you must have separate working capital policies for different organization. This working capital policy is associated with three decisions. What are the, with, 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 with the decisions regarding uh, uh, the target levels of each current assets account and how current assets will be financed. So you see that the term working capital policy is associated with decisions. I use the term several times we are talking about decision science we are learning working capital management to take right decision so here also the term working capital policy refers to the decisions regarding number one the target levels for each current asset account and target level of each current account account cash yes current asset account account receivable current asset account inventory current asset account. So we need to set our target levels for cash, for account receivables, for inventory. How much money we want to invest for inventory. That should be determined without plan. If you have cash, if you have inventory, if you have account receivable, later you will find that you have profit, but that is not maximizing shareholders' wealth. Now, if you determine, you'll be able to determine the need of cash, the need of account receivable, the need of inventories. Now the question is, how will you finance these current assets? So the answer of these two questions related to working capital policy. So we can say working capital policy can be divided into two groups. One is working capital investment policy. Another one is working capital financing policy, working capital investment policy, and working capital financing policy. Have you heard about Yankee Petler? Yankee Petler, a uh, very renowned uh, terminology used for are uh, reminding the history of working capital. So the term working capital originated with these old Yankee peddler concept. Yankee peddler who would load up his wagon with goods and then go off on his route to peddle his wares. So Yankee peddler, they use their wagon, horse wagon, uh, to buy and sell goods and commodities. Earlier age, these Yankee peddler, they move from one place to another place with their horses and wagon. So they buy goods and commodities from one place and then they sell it to another place. So the horses, the wagon, 
that was treated as their fixed asset and the goods and commodities was treated as their current assets or they borrow for buying their goods and commodities and after selling that goods and commodities they repay their loan amount so that loan was also known as loan for working capital or borrowed fund for working capital. So this way from Yankee peddler, the term working capital was ge generated. So they use the term working capital to mention the capital needs to buy those goods and commodities. What Yankee peddlers are going to sell to make profit. Their horses and their wagon were treated as fixed asset and their goods and commodities and especially the borrowed amount that they used to buy goods was treated as borrowed fund for working capital. So these way from the terminology, Yankee peddler has become the part of the history of working capital. So try to remember this Yankee peddler. Sometimes some places people may ask you, uh, have you heard the word Yankee peddler? How Yankee peddler is related to working capital? Now we are familiar with working capital. We are familiar with working capital components, then working capital policies. Now we will enter into the depth a little more inside that working capital management policies. What are the subject matters of working capital management policies? Because uh, you are starting business, you are going to apply your knowledge for framing policies. And I ask you that after 10 years, what do you want to see yourself? Because I want to know whether you are going to take a decision uh, making positions or not. So you are starting so many courses, not only for operating day-to-day -day activities, not only for maintaining day-to-day -day operations. Moreover, you are going to frame policy of the organization. You are ultimate decision makers you will work for designing and maintaining policies of the organization. So one of these policies is working capital management policies. And these working capital uh, management policies are really concerned with the problems that arise in attempting to manage the current asset and current liabilities and maintaining relationship between current assets and current liabilities. You have studied ratios from other courses. I know you have calculated current ratio, current asset divided by current liabilities. So what it is, it is one kind of relationship between current assets and current liabilities. Traditionally, it says that current assets should be twice than current liabilities. It means that you have enough capability to pay current liabilities and also have additional cash to run day-to-day -day operation. So now we know current assets components, we know current liabilities components. So after that, we can say that what's the main feature, main uh, feature of these two. Main feature, we know that one is associated with conversion of cash very soon. Another one is you have to pay within a shorter period of time. So working capital management policies, when you are going to form, you must keep in your mind two terminologies. What are these? One is profitability and liquidity. Since you are starting business, since you have enough knowledge about finance and accounts, so your working capital management policies will not be only related to current assets and current liabilities. Moreover, your concern about profitability and liquidity. You have to maintain your current asset level in a way that your liquidity will be there, but that is not too much liquidity that will decrease your return. And that's where you have to trade up. You have to maintain a level of profitability and liquidity. We can see this. 
if you want to enhance your profitability, you see that you see that you can do it or you can enhance your liquidity. So if you are a very conservative policy makers that you don't want to take the risk. So when you don't want to take the risk, you will go for conservative management means you want to keep money in your pocket all the time. You want to keep enough money in your business all the time so that you can freely spend the money. This is conservative management. In that case is you are going to sacrifice profit. If you have more liquidity, yes, you can minimize risk, but you have to sacrifice profit. If you are an aggressive manager, aggressive management style you follow, then you want more profit using less liquidity. So your profitability will go up using less liquidity. It means you are taking high risk. And if you are in between, you are making a trade up, you are not taking high risk or you are not taking lower risk. You are not storing used liquidity or you are keeping use liquidity or you don't want too much profit taking use risk, that case is you will practice neutral management. Again, conservative management means you have high liquidity. You don't want that much profit, but you want to minimize risk. And aggressive management means you want to maximize your profit, taking high risk, maintaining lower level of liquidity. And neutral means you are in between. You are not going to take high risk or you are not going to maintain super liquidity, idle liquidity uh, for your business. So what are the goals of working capital management policies? So we are talking about already, I have mentioned this one, that one goal you must keep in your mind that you want to make a balance, balance between profitability and liquidity. And then now we specify other goals can be incorporated here. One goal is to manage the firm's current assets and current liabilities in a way that an optimum level of working capital is maintained. But again, we don't know exactly what is optimum capital. So it varies organization to organization. So what is the optimum capital of organization A may not be the optimum working capital for the organization B. Then we have to remember if the firm fails to maintain a satisfactory level of working capital, it is likely to become financially insolvent and even may be forced into bankruptcy. And we have seen many online organizations in Bangladesh are going to be bankrupt. It's not because of long-term capital, it's because of their, their problems associated with working capital management. They're not very good in working capital management. They're not very good in day-to-day -day operations. You see that they have made hodge all of their business. It's because uh, they never recruit finance people to uh, properly handle financial operations. And we keep in our mind that current asset should be large enough to cover its current liabilities. We say that net working capital should be positive. It means current asset should be large enough to cover its current liabilities in order to ensure a reasonable margin of safety. Reasonable margin of safety. So when you calculated current ratio, current asset divided by current liabilities, why the common practice is current asset should be twice than current liabilities. That is called margin of safety. After paying current liabilities, is still we want some additional liquidity to run our day-to-day -day operations. Each of the current asset must be managed efficiently. You see that we are talking about current asset, current asset, current asset again. So you can't manage current asset as a whole. You have to manage each current liabilities, each current assets separately. That's what we say you must have a good cash management. You must have good inventory management. You must have good account receivable management. On the other hand, you must know how to manage overdraft, how to use short-term loan or liabilities, how to buy on credit and pay on time. You need to learn all these things. And these all are associated with 
working capital management policies. And I hope as a first day, and that is enough from my side. Now you can ask 